each and every organism managed to arrive and survive is the ultimate evolutionary tale, best told by veteran park ranger Max Orchard. To get where it is today, um, geologically, there's been hundreds of millions of years. So essentially we're standing on the tip of a mountain, a volcano that is actually higher than Mount Everest. But uh, at the moment there's only about 300 metres of that sticking out above the top of the ocean. Islands that have formed in this manner are referred to as being oceanic, and every living thing you see on them has been, in effect, introduced. All the species that have arrived on Christmas Island arrived in the same way. They floated in or were brought in by wind or birds or animals. It's safe to assume that salt-tolerant species, like the saltbush, pandanus and coconut palms that dominate the coastal terrace, were the first to colonise the island. But as soils developed, other plants were able to establish, providing shelter and food for a host of different animals and birds. You get this suite of organisms that build up over huge amounts of time. It is one thing to arrive and survive, another thing entirely to thrive. And of all the creatures doing just that on Christmas Island, land crabs are the most successful. One of the best places to see them year-round is here at the heart of Hughesdale. This comes from the spring up above the falls and it flows out into the sea. And it's one of the major watercourses on Christmas Island. It's an area where the original basalt rock from the volcano is at the surface. The water can't penetrate into that rock, so it forms ideal habitat for the blue crabs. And, and it's also a water supply for the birds and all the other crab species as well. Mm -hmm. 